Hi, I'm Saya. I'm from the UK. I had my year abroad here from Cambridge University, where I do Chinese studies. I'm Pierrick, in Taiwan since October, postdoc researcher at the National Taiwan University, doing research in paleoclimates. And how did you guys meet? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very easy to feel lonely when you're living abroad, so it's very lovely to kind of meet someone, and we met so quickly. Or by the way, you're dating me just because I can speak Chinese. Yeah. Just my guide. How did you guys end up coming to Taiwan out of all the places that you could study? Because I did my PhD about past climate and ocean changes around Taiwan since 20,000 years. And I was working with researchers in Taiwan. I asked them, okay, do you have a postdoc position? They had one about extreme events in Taiwan because Taiwan has the most highest rate of typhoons in the world. What do people think about NTU back in France? Is it seen as prestigious? Yes, in my field at Geoscience. In 2018, there was a cruise, Franco-Taiwanese. The sediment that you take from the deep ocean, half go to Taiwan, half go to France. And I did my PhD on the data produced by the cruise. And this is a really big deal in their field. We're talking in the order of millions. Is there any kind of application that would impact people's everyday lives in terms of this research. We are facing global warming. We should reach like two or three degrees more or less before the end of the century. Starting 18,000 years ago, you have a rise of temperature of three degrees. You have a good correlation between the rise of the temperature and typhoons affecting Taiwan. I'm trying to give testimony of what happened in the past mm. to help them to understand what will happen mm. in the future. For How the moment, bad is it going to be at the end of this century? Prophesize for <laughs> us, Tell us please. what's happening, yes, what's going to happen. <laughs> what brought you out here? My university has a very good plan to make sure that we all speak a language by the time we graduate. And so for this, they send us abroad. So my university, they really encourage us to come to Taiwan. Taipei is massive, it's loud, it's busy. But in the end, I'm super happy I came here. In an even bigger city like Wangzhou or Beijing, I would not survive. You <laughs> 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 I think they're just so important. They have impacted thousands, if not millions, of people before me. So I think it's great that, like, I've read Dream of the Red Chamber, Confucius. Our teachers tried to make classical more entertaining. So we did some uh, ghost stories and very old Chinese medicine stories. Like, it's crazy to see, like, mothers in law and wives having quarrels and disputes 3,000 years ago and seeing, wow, nothing has changed. <laughs> what do you think about Taiwan? trying to phase that out of their curriculum. If a piece of literature has had such a big impact on your society, for example, the writings of Confucius on modern Taiwanese society, you have to study that just to understand the origins of your own society. How has your time in Taiwan like impacted your studies and your enthusiasm to keep studying? It's impacted everything. So living in Taiwan has taught me that I know nothing. <laughs> I always kind of assumed that in places like Taiwan, Taiwan, the family is number one and children are number one. But then I came here and there are loads of women around my age who say now they don't want children, ever. It's and they don't believe in marriage. And it's so crazy because in my studies, including classical Chinese, this was never an option. What is it like though being in a culture that's only one ethnicity? Yeah, it's been very difficult for me because I'm so used to a multicultural environment. I'm so used to looking at a street and seeing loads of different skin colors, styles of clothes, diversity of opinions as well. I think we really love arguing and putting forward our point of view. Mm. But I think the people here are just very lovely and they're like, oh, that's so lovely that you like this. And they'll just keep the conversation going. There's yeah. There's an element of like conflict in the West. Debating is our hobby. Like even between the two of us, we love debating. We're always debating. <laughs> Politics and religion, all of these topics, I think that a lot of Taiwanese people would be very careful about approaching. I had a lovely Taiwanese friend invite me to spend uh, Chinese New Year 
is with her family. Oh, nice. So that was That's very cool. lovely. Funnily enough, I spent the whole day talking to her dad because he was more ready to kind of debate with me. <laughs> like the dad was like, wow, so do you think the people at Oxford and Cambridge University are actually very smart? And I said, no, honestly, no. And he was like, wow, really? I knew so, I knew so. <laughs> Even if you don't speak Chinese, I think they are already doing a very good uh, job to make it easy to come, like to adapt in Taiwan. I had my parents that come to Taiwan. Uh, they went to Taroko by themselves without speaking at all the Chinese with zero, zero problem. Like, people are so kind. Yeah. You think if a uh, Taiwanese person went to France and didn't speak French? Oh, oh good luck. <laughs> France is not safe at all. Uh, and the Taiwanese know this. Like, even when I meet up with some of my Taiwanese friends, they'll ask me, like, oh, is London really as dangerous as they say? Do you really have to, like, put your purse deep into your bag and zip it? Yeah. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I think, yeah, if you talk about cultural shock, this is this one. Like, oh, okay. you arrive in the country and you're like, I can let my bag here and I can go to take my coffee and come back. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. And for me, I lost my number one way to make new friends. Like, in the cafe, if I'm sitting next to someone interesting, I'll always be like, oh, could you look after my stuff while I run to the bar? <laughs> Boom, new friend. Yeah, and and then you come more. back and you say, oh, thank you so much. What you're doing looks so interesting. <laughs> and then you can chat. And here you don't do that. And it's crazy. I went to brunch recently and I was with a lovely Taiwanese girl, early 20s. And we were chatting and I realized that her face was kind of always like this or like agreeing or like looking interested. But in Europe, I'm so used to my partner like engaging with their hands and their eyebrows and their eyes are going big and like this. But here it just seems a lot more kind of toned down and I always thought people in the UK were a little bit more like maybe sarcastic, kind of like Yeah, cheeky. but see, even sarcastic and cheeky, those are quite energetic feelings. Yes. Yeah. Oh really? You're hot today. I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that I thought this was more Japanese, but I feel like a lot of Taiwanese women they speak with a slightly higher register. Oh wow, Tai Li Hai, Tai Hao Da. Sometimes it kind of throws me off. It gives me ke ai vibes. This is actually something Pierik thought I was being very judgy, but it was very funny to me how key rings are such a big thing here. Yeah. Like I think in London, in the UK, if you have like a lady in her 30s, 40s, 50s, mm. it would be seen as, excuse me, you're an adult, why do you have a puppy? <laughs> but here it's normal and here it's great. They have like lots of advertisements. They are using like cute animals. That's fine, but some I of them make me you. angry. Yeah. <laughs> like the post office, they did some kind of collaboration uh, yeah. with some video game. Mm. And so there are these girls with these massive yeah, boobs no, no, in <laughs> these tiny little bras, in these short, short skirts, yeah. advertising the post office. Yeah. And I don't know, it's like... Another thing that surprised me in Taiwan is that people are doing a lot of activities outside, having picnic in the park. Yeah, everyone and has hobbies. It, I love how active the older people here are with their Tai Chi clubs and yeah. their chess clubs. And then whenever you go on a hike there will always be a tour group but at least in the UK the older people they just have their dog and they walk their dog and that's it we even have a problem with elderly loneliness and another thing that is a bit different also is that I don't feel that the culture of swimming Mm. Yeah. Oh, and, and I was going to the beach the or like uh, yeah, yeah. surfing. Before I came here, I always judged people in the UK with their anti-sun umbrellas. <laughs> then I came here yeah. and now I completely understand. <laughs> when it's sunny, give me my umbrella, <laughs> sunglasses, sleeves, of course. Yeah. I have integrated <laughs> this, yes. in this sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 想每一个台湾人会说英文
在这里很像英国的时候，我会去到法国的面包街。And yeah, uh, yeah sure. so IKEA, it's a bit strange. IKEA, <laughs> yes. Yeah. We go maybe once a month because it's very normal. We're used to it. Did you guys have any experience dating locals before you guys met? No. 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 It's really weird. Most of my Taiwanese friends are girls, and I can't seem to meet any Taiwanese guys, even just to be friends. No, I have the same problem. I've been here for 12 years. I have、mm. like one Taiwanese.、Guy、really?、From. Wow. Yeah, and he lives in Shanghai now. I would sometimes go out with my、uh, international guy friends here. They would always be approached by some Taiwanese girls. Thought like, ah,、oh, it's a little bit strange to have like attraction only to white guys. But then I spoke to some Taiwanese girls, and they explained to me like foreign guys they know what they want, and they're usually a lot more forward. Taiwanese guys are often very shy, and sometimes they're very traditional. There's a lot less pressure, pressure to spend New Year's with your husband's family. So then I started seeing things from a bit of a different point of view. Where it's not just like a fetishization. No, fetish yeah, no. Yeah. What do you think that Taiwan could Do to like attract people、mm. such as yourselves to stay and settle down here. I love how I came here and I suddenly meet students from Leiden University, Oxford University, University、yeah. of Lyon in France. So now you just need those students after they've studied a bit of Chinese for them to stay here. And we want to. We just can't find something that isn't a job. So an internship would be great. The other point would be maybe to make more publicity about this possibility for research, at least for post. Doc to apply for one-year contract, which、mm -hmm. is a bit annoying. They were able to like give contract of three years in one time, like it's done everywhere in the world. People will do more easily this effort. Yeah, that's far away from your country. 